Hello, hello everyone. Now, if I sound a bit stuffy, I apologize. I'm a bit, uh, I got a bit of a flu going on and it might be affecting, <clears throat> affecting me a bit. Uh, today I'll be featuring the tier 5 T22 German DD. The matchmaking is of course extremely heavily tier 6 and tier 7 based and that's kind of one of the big things of why I don't like tier 5 in this game. You get up tiered a lot. Get used to always facing higher tier ships when you're playing tier 5 and that's of course why I generally don't recommend tier 5 premiums either because they suffer from this very same issue. Now, um, I let my chat vote on which line I should level next on the Russian server and chat voted for German DDs. And I'm actually pretty glad about this because I haven't featured German DDs in a while on my channel and this will allow me to, and most of my commentaries are pretty old, possibly even outdated on the German DDs. So leveling through the line will allow me to go through T5, T6, T7, T8, T9, T10 and make updated commentaries on them. I won't bother with the tier 3 and tier 4 because honestly, you you breeze past those tiers so very quickly. It's it's a handful of games. It's one, two, three games and you're pretty much all on to the next tier. And you got protected matchmaking as well, so it's it's kinda straightforward. The T22 is honestly a pretty bad destroyer. You might note when when I angle away like this, when I try to kite away and shoot, uh, my front the front turret cannot shoot at all, and that's because there's uh, basically, the ship itself is blocking the angles, so you got to keep that in mind whenever you're kiting away, which you obviously often want to do because, well, you're up tier and you don't want to be charging into them while taking hits. Um, you will only have three guns at your disposal. Worse is that this, the gun, the ship has very small caliber guns, 105 mil, and uh, they deal like. 1.2k HE alpha each, which of course after all the reductions ends up being not much damage at all. In fact your gun power is extremely pitiful, so you can be landing tens and tens and tens of hits and struggling to even break 10k damage with these guns. So ultimately what you want to be doing is kind of what I'm doing here, and that's just spotting and spotting for your team, scouting, if you get an opportunity to torp, take it, but in general you don't really want to be using your guns too much. Another thing that the German line heavily suffers from is that they are extremely smoke-starved. Um, what I mean with smoke-starved, well, let's take an example. The Pan-Asian line is smoke-saturated. That means that the Pan-Asian DD line, you have very long duration smokes with a very short duration cooldown, which means you have almost no downtime between smokes, you can smoke up whenever you feel like it, and uh, when your smoke runs out, your next smoke is almost instantly available. You're very saturated with smokes, you don't have to consider when and where and how to use those smokes, because they are pretty much almost available. On the German DD line, however, your smoke cooldowns are massive, and your smoke duration is extremely short. So you spend a large chunk of your time without having your smoke available. This means you need to put considerably more tactical thought into when and where you want to be using these smokes. Especially at low tier, when even running the premium smoke, you won't have superintendent, so you'll actually only have three smokes available to you. So you might note here, even though I'm against a Gaede and a Podvoisky, I realize I have so much support, whereas their teammates are so far back, that I can avoid using my smoke here and just uh, fight them in the open. In general, if you fight like gunboats like this, especially in the T22, you would want to smoke, but I want to save the smoke as much as possible because they are extremely valuable. Even with the premium cooldown, the smoke, uh, even with premium consumable, the smoke cooldown is something like two and a half minutes, and I think it only lasts 60 seconds or something. It's a stupidly long downtime between the smokes. So you want to be really sparing with these. You don't want to be wasting them at any point. And you've probably seen, I mean, 12 hits, I've done 4,000 damage. I think we'll get an even better example of just how silly weak uh, these guns are when the, if we catch the Gaeta coming back here. Um, the torps are actually pretty okay. German DD torps are, across the board, pretty damn good. They don't scale that well into high tier, like you don't really gain more damage on them, but they are quite fast, they deal decent damage, they got deal decent concealment. Okay, he has 6,000 health. 6,154 health. That seems like an easy piece of cake. The problem is the T22 HE alpha damage is so very underwhelming. 
so very very underwhelming and this right here is and you see of course when i angle away i can't really use more than three guns and you i do want to be angling away because the guy that does a significantly more damage than i do we keep raining hits on him i mean it's not like we're missing all these shots on this wall is we're, we're landing a couple hit, hits every time and in fact we're up to 14 hits 15 hits 17 hits? He had 6,000 health. I've landed 17 hits. He still had over 1k health left. And, well, now my team is probably going to kill him. So that gives you an idea of just how pitiful the firepower of this ship is. And this means you get outgunned. You get outgunned a lot. If you fight someone who knows what they're doing, knows how to aim and so forth, you will lose the fight. Uh, Nicholas, Clemson, Farragut, Mayhan, Gaede, even Shinonome, like... All pretty much all the Russian gunboats, all of these have the potential to outgun you and outtrade you and just beat you in a straight up fight very, very easily. So, this means you don't really want to be taking too many fights. You want to be scouting, and in general, you want to make it past this tier as quickly as possible. So, you see what I'm doing. I'm not actually chasing the Nagata, I'm not chasing the Cleveland, I'm not going up there to try to smoke and gun them down or try to go for some fortunate torps or whatever to kill them. No, no. We have one goal and one goal alone, and that is to win the game as quickly as possible. And that is kind of your role as a DD. You capture objectives, you scout, you win your team the game. And that is exactly what you want to be doing in the T22. Because it's simply a mediocre tier 5. And if you faced other tier 5s, then being, being a mediocre to average tier 5 wouldn't be that big of a deal, because other lines also have these uh, T5s that aren't that special. However, the problem with tier 5 is you end up facing tier 7s a lot. And being a mediocre tier 5 and facing tier 7s means that you're kind of the punching bag. So, in general, the smokes, try to save them for your own use as much as possible. Meaning, um, try to save them as an escape tool, as a defensive tool. Uh, don't charge in, smoke up, and start shooting, and then when your smoke is on cooldown, you're kind of just having to hide for the rest of the game. Use it for when you are in trouble and you simply are forced to smoke up. Those are the situations where you want to be using the smokes. Uh, for example, pushing into this gap. Keep in mind that I would not push through this gap this aggressively if my smoke wasn't available, but because there's a chance that the Mayhem or the Egle might be somewhere nearby, so I would never take this risk if my smoke was on cooldown. So this is why I'm glad that I haven't used my smokes and I've been saving them, because now I can push in, and if a DD were to show up, I would have the ability to smoke up uh, instead of taking some sort of fight in the open with them. Once again, because both of them can easily outgun me. This is a very common theme. You, you are a hybrid, which means you're both a gunboat and a torpedo boat, but your gun power is so pitiful that you don't really want to be gunboating at all. So even though you're technically a hybrid, you're not really a hybrid. Kind of like the Ognavoy. A common mistake people make with the Ognavoy is that they keep trying to gunboat with that thing, even though it's a terrible gunboat um, as compared to its uh, uh, tier equivalents or even higher tier equivalents. Note that I'm not aiming exactly where he's going, I'm aiming ahead of the white line. And that's, if you see a ship is turning, um, don't aim for the white line, your torps will just land behind him. Aim where he's going. Don't aim where the white line says he's going, because that only shows the current exact prediction. It doesn't show where he'll go if he turns. So you have to keep that in mind yourself, and you have to adjust your torpedoes based on where he's actually turning. So I noted that I adjusted it a bit ahead of the white line and because of the way he's turning my aim turns out to be very very good with these torpedoes and I land out of six torps I land five so that is good he does barely survive no devastating strike sadly but this is the time where I smoke up because both the Mayoko is the Mayoko is just about to spot me so this is a good time to smoke up I use AP because he's giving broadside which means I can get a lot of pens going the Mayoko is, however, rushing me. He saw my torps land, so he thinks my torps won't be on cooldown. So we're gonna wait the few seconds. Our torp is about to get ready. Important note here, if a cruiser is rushing you like this, don't sit still in the smoke waiting for him to arrive. He has all the maneuverability advantages. Instead, speed out of the smoke and meet him. 
Now you got an equal playing field. You're both moving at full speed. You both have the maneuverability. Don't waste your torps. Don't panic launch them. I'd rather eat a few hits from him and close the distance and make sure at point blank range he has absolutely no chance of dodging. My first volley was enough to kill him. My second volley was uh, to make sure there couldn't be anything surprising happening afterwards. Um, one of the most common mistakes the DDs make uh, when they smoke up in situations like that is first of all they sit still and just park and wait and let the, let the enemy come to them and then they're basically sitting ducks and they're so easy and predictable to deal with don't do that counter charge the enemy you close the distance much much faster if, if you counter charge the enemy and you he really doesn't know what to do and if he starts turning one way you have the opportunity to maneuver the other way and so forth it gives you more options so never be a sitting duck Another thing is, don't waste your torps too early. You saw how long I held my torps. I waited, on, I even took the shots. I knew he was going to shoot me and I just happily took the hits. Simply because I did not want my torps to miss. Because if your torps miss in a situation like that, you're almost guaranteed dead. So I, instead I took a few hits and I guaranteed a kill without any, absolutely any chances of anything going wrong. And that's in general how you want to be taking fights like that. Play it. Calm, safe, counter charge the enemy, save your torps until the, in, until the very last moment, and then make sure you land all your torpedoes. Because if I had panic launched my torps with the way he was dodging and moving, he would have dodged them easily. The reason he rushed me, of course, was he just saw me torp his teammate, so he thought my torps were on cooldown, but he didn't take into account the travel time of the torpedoes, which means, of course, it took some time until the torps re reached uh, the guy, and that gave me time to reload my own torpedoes. The game ended um, 91k damage. My damage was pretty much non-existent until the very last few minutes. And I was perfectly okay with that. Because in the T22, you shouldn't be hunting for the damage. You should just be trying to win the game. You, this is not a fun ship. Uh, and it's a very frustrating ship because pretty much everyone is better at everything than you are. So you don't really want to be spending and wasting time uh, on this tier and you don't want to be trying to take these frustrating fights. You have one goal and one goal alone when playing the ship and that is trying to win as quickly as possible. Um, team score wise we do break 2.1k XP but that's, I mean, the damage was sure, the damage of course helped but ultimately you got to consider I also had two solo caps one shared cap and four cap resets and that's what really gives you the xp those caps especially are extremely rewarding for xp and that's why we were able to get so much xp out of this single game detailed report wise uh well let's see Oop, there we go i mean the majority of the damage we did i mean podvoyski and gaeda we shot them both a ton but the damage we of course deal with these guns. Look look at that damage. High explosive shell. 34 hits, 9,000 damage. The guns are pitiful. Extremely pitiful. So don't go charging in against the Clemson or something similar and thinking um, he's a tier lower, I'm gonna win this, or a Nicholas or whatever, or a CN Young, whatever. Don't go charging and taking fights with them. They're gonna destroy you. They will absolutely annihilate you. It doesn't help that you're also very large. Uh, it's a it looks like a tugboat. It's thick, large, easy to hit. It eats a lot of AP pens as well. Don't even attempt to. Just accept that this ship is pretty garbage and play around the fact. Because it's not a long grind from tier 5 to tier 6. And if you try to force the ship into doing things that it's not very good at, it's just going to be a very, very frustrating time. Anyway, let me show you guys my recommended build. I don't. Re I started a new captain because, uh, well, as I mentioned, we're leveling a completely new, a new line, so I had to level a completely new captain. I think I have like 10 or 11 points on it, so it's a, it's a bit more than you would normally have here. You probably wouldn't have a concealment expert, which, which is such a huge deal, but I can show you the recommended build regardless. Right, as usual, I will start with the modules. However, I've already unlocked the Ernst Gaede, so we'll just have to go back to the previous ship. As I am leveling the German DD line, as I mentioned, so I'm kind of just working through them as quickly as possible, since that's what my chat voted for. Now, on the T22, the first thing you want to get is the hull upgrade. Now, I know the Torps look really tempting because you get that 500 additional range, which is a really big deal when you're as limited on range as you are. But uh, the hull upgrade gives you 1.9k health. Now, 1.9k health might not sound like much, but when you got 9.4k health, you realize that that 1.9k is like 
20% more health. It's huge. It's absolutely massive. It's it's more than 20%. It's a huge deal. So getting the hull upgrade as soon as possible, and it of course also gives you faster rudder shift, which is very important for dodging incoming shells and torpedoes and such things. Uh, so get the hull upgrade, follow it up with the torpedo upgrade. And honestly, the range upgrade... You don't really need to get it if you don't want to, because as I mentioned, these gun arcs are pretty garbage, the shell damage is pretty garbage, you gain 900 meters additional range. It might give you an opportunity to maybe shoot some battleship sitting still or reversing or whatever uh, at, at a slightly longer distance, well, 900 meters, but ultimately the value of this upgrade is extremely limited. And if you just want to Get away from this tugboat as soon as possible and just uh, reach the tier 6 as soon as possible. You can just skip this upgrade altogether and just go straight. Uh, save the XP for the tier 6 instead. Now, module-wise, I'll just show them on the Gaede. Um, or, well, upgrade-wise. Main Armaments Mod 1 is the bread and butter of pretty much every single DD out there. It increases your turret survivability, it increases your torpedo tube survivability, and it also speeds up how quickly these things repair. So it's a kind of all-in-one amazing upgrade for DDs, because one HE shell breaks so many things on your ship, so it's a huge deal. Propulsion Mod 1. Now, even, even though we use the per-class stand, which means we can still maneuver with a broken engine or broken rudder, um, it still messes with our speed and acceleration. So we want to limit the time our engine is broken as much as possible. So that is why we run Propulsion Mod 1. Now there is the option, let's see if I got a speed boost here somewhere on, on some one of the ships I can show. Uh, there is the option of Engine Boost Mod 1. Actually, no there isn't. You can only slot it on Tier 6 and above. Never mind. Well, good thing then. Um, follow it up with better turret dispersion and I think this is a tier 6 upgrade, uh, the faster rudder shift. So we're just gonna skip that one for now. Consumable wise, you don't get the hydro yet at tier 5, but honestly, premium smoke. I would recommend premium smoke. Premium damage gun isn't really that important at uh, on a DD because you have really fast repair anyway. It's it's it is useful. It is great. I recommend it. But if you're if you're saving money and you're leveling a new line and so forth, then the one consumable you want to get is the premium smoke, and that's because the difference between the cooldowns is so massive. One has a 240 second cooldown which is a four minute one and the other one has a hundred and i think 60 second cooldown so you re that's a two and a half minute cooldown so you realize you're saving one and a half minutes of downtime between the smokes just by getting the premium smoke so that is highly recommended you can of course click the small box here uh, or the small arrow and select that you're paying with credits and not with doubloons as doubloons cost real money so i do highly recommend getting at least the premium smoke captain perks wise um, well, we're going for the base. You start off with the very basic DD build, which you kind of use on almost all DDs. There are exceptions, of course, but it's the universal DD build that I recommend. And the first one is preventive maintenance. This includes turrets, torpedo tubes, engine, rudder. These are things that constantly, constantly break on a DD. Reducing the chance of these things breaking by 30% is a huge one-point perk, and there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't take it. Follow it up with last stand. Once again, uh, it, this is must-have bread and butter. If you don't get this on a DD, I think you're an idiot. Uh, because if you get your engine knocked out twice, just by bad RNG, your engine gets knocked out, you repair it, oh, a stray shell or stray secondary shell, whatever, hits you again and breaks it again, then you're, then you're a sitting duck and you're guaranteed dead. Uh, two points to avoid that situation, it, it's just a straightforward perk. Um, survivability expert, more health per tier. At tier 10 it gives you 3.5k health and considering how limited you are on health on a DD this is just once again a very straightforward perk. Um, it, this isn't as straightforward as the other two as there are some options depending on build but on this extremely squishy lower tier German DDs especially this thing is just way way too good to not take. And finally concealment expert. Uh, your role as a German deity is to contest capture points. You want to be able to get there without being spotted from the moon. So this just... And of course you want to be tropping ships and all these things. So this just synergizes perfectly with everything you want to do. So this is the basic 10 point build. Preventive maintenance, last stand, survivability expert and concealment expert. From here you can start branching out. Right, I went for priority target. 
because when I am fighting other DDs, especially in the Gaede, which actually has guns that can do it somewhat well, and I'm gunboating in the open, I like to see how many people are aiming at me. If battleships are aiming at me and so forth, I kind of you kind of need to know so you don't get blapped. Um, it gives you a lot of information, and I consider it a very strong perk. I will be following this up with AR. Adrenaline Rush. You can skip uh, priority target and go straight for AR at 12 points, but honestly I consider taking PT first to be well worth it because it's just such such a strong one point ability. Also if you're pushing into a cap and get, you get spotted, uh, priority target will tell you how many enemies are pushing towards the cap. Because if you spot another DD and there's only one person aiming at you, then you know that the DD is alone. He doesn't have any backup, and you don't need to smoke up, you can just fight him in the open, and you can wreck him. But if you engage another DD, and priority target shows three or four people are aiming at you, then you know that there's probably cruisers that you haven't spotted yet that are about to open up, or someone about to pop out from behind, behind an island and blap you, and in those cases you need to disengage. Priority target is basically a lot of extremely valuable information and the better you get at the game, the more experience you get, the more you can use that information to plan ahead and plan your future moves. So for one point, once again, I consider priority target to be pretty damn valuable. I would follow it up with Adrenaline Rush. After this, um, I would probably, once if well this is getting a bit too high for lower tier, but I would probably follow it up with Superintendent once again, because the German DDs, they use multiple consumables, they use three of them, unlike many others who pretty much only use two, um, well, depending on defensive AA and so forth, but most of the time um, you use Hydra and Smoke all the time, and Speed Boost is so valuable that Superintendent is, is a pretty straightforward perk as well. There are options of course, but I consider it a very safe option in case you're wondering what you want to spec for. But that's a pretty high tier captain, and considering we're still only at tier 5, I won't go any further. Flag-wise, I would recommend uh, the base two flags for any DD is Detonation Flag, because DDs detonate a lot, and uh, speed flag, because, well, dodging shells is kind of your bread and butter thing, and you want to survive. If you follow, you, if I'm not wasting my speed flags yet on this tier 6, but I mean, that's because I have a lot of high tier DDs that I want to be using it on. And if you do have them, November Foxtrot are great, especially on the German DDs, because German DDs are extremely smoke starved, which means they have a very short duration of smoke with, with a very long cooldown, and being able to reduce this cooldown even by 5% is so very valuable. If you have also fire, fire chance flags, they are pretty good. They are pretty, just a nice additional DPS if you do get the spamming HA on ships. But in general, especially on the T22, you just want to be putting all your XP flags on and just trying to get past it as quickly as possible, because I just consider it a very mediocre ship in every way. Anyway, that was my T22 commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, uh, well, I will follow it up with the Gaia Day, and honestly, I'll just, I'm just leveling through this entire line, since people have been requesting German DDs for quite some time. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll talk to you later.